everybody and welcome to this next installment of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to do something very different because I got an email from somebody who actually, I'm so bad at this, dude. I'm like the worst fucking podcast host ever. Here's the thing. I got an email from Nancy. Thank you, Nancy, for your email. Um, and the email was quite um, quick and to the point. This one was, at least. And it said, for a poetry podcast, you sure don't have any poetry on it, or something along those lines. And Nancy is quite fucking astute. And, like, I can't fucking go, listen here, chick. Um, Because she's fucking totally right. I forget. There have been so many times when I sat down to do this show and I would have a book to my left here of a poem I'm going to read. Then, like, I'm just fucking running the liquor all fucking day and I forget all about it. So, today we are going to... uh, I'm going to read some of my favorite poems to you guys. So, that'll be fun. You'll get some good edification there. But I want to explain to you why that's not necessarily the focus of this podcast. If you search poetry podcasts on iTunes or whatever, you are going to find tons and tons of podcasts of people reading poetry, because that's kind of what a poetry podcast probably should be. But you don't really get a lot of podcasts where a poet is talking to you about how to not fucking hate yourself all day. Which is funny since we're on the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. But like this whole idea, like like I don't think I'm a fucking self-help guru or anything like that, but I fucking help people, you know? Like a lot of the people who do mentorship with me, they already know what the fuck they're doing. They just need... Really? They just need somebody to help them along to do what the next step is. We all need to know what the next step is. I've gone to people saying, dude, I have done all of this shit. What's next? Like, what do you think would be the next logical step in my life here? And there's not really a whole lot of that. The podcasts that I listen to, I listen to for those things. Like... I like hearing poetry. I like hearing stuff, but I also like hearing just people being fucking real and talking about the fucking problems that they're having and the issues they're facing and normalizing the fact that not everyone's fucking perfect and everyone has to fucking go through this shit. The other email I got from Nancy, I I was looking for it briefly before I started this, but it was something about how... uh, Nancy, you you can write me another email to tell me how I butchered this, but it was an email about how I, I was kind of talking shit on the commonplace podcast. (laughs) And, um, I said, I can't remember what the fuck I said. I said something. And then I said, that's literally what they said. Okay. And it obviously was a huge exaggeration, but for some fucking stupid reason, I said literally when I was done. I can't remember what the email said now. But it was something along the lines of, you're rude, that's not nice, something, something, blah, blah, blah. But fuck, I mean, Nancy's at least listened to two episodes, so hell, I'm I'm glad you're around. Um, Speaking of being glad you're around, me, you guys should all go give this podcast five stars. Um, I'm sure Nancy's gonna. I'm sure that's, like, next on her fucking agenda for today. Just because uh, it's the right thing to do. And if you don't do it, um, I'm sure there's, like, some weird, like, chain mail something. Or something curse or bad thing will happen to you if you don't. I don't think that's necessarily extortion. Because, obviously, I don't know who you are listening to this. Or do I... So many things. So many things. So anyway, yeah, so what, what What? else? Oh, oh, really? How can we forget this? I think it's time. You know what time it is. 
it's time for the gosh dang shout outs so i want to give a big thank you to those of you on patreon who support me and my work so michael and cedar and harry thank you guys so much and then over on um youtube am patrick and alan thank you guys so much thank you thank you thank you and now for the big swinging dicks at the anarchy crew who do what swing for the fences and hit balls over walls you guys know how this goes so thank you bunny thank you nate thank you mindy thank you thomas thank you tim thank you lisa thank you josh and thank you jessica you guys are amazing and you guys are killing it and if you also would like to join the anarchy crew you can i'll let you you just hit the join button on my YouTube page. And if you want to know what is going on, there's like 90 plus videos um, for Anarchy Crew members um, that no one else gets. And if you are unsure of what the Anarchy Crew is, imagine having 90 plus workshops you could attend. That's a lot of workshops. And you could do this all for as little as $9.99 a month. So if you want to see what it's like and see if it's for you, go over to poeticanarchy.com and there's five lessons there, five di like five different workshops that you could go fucking take part in and see what you think. And if you like it, which I think you will, because just like Cam on Modern Family said, I am a lot like Costco. I'm big, I'm not fancy, and I dare you to not love me. Boom. There it is, guys. And also, it's not set up yet, but it will be soon on YouTube. But if you would like to join the chat book of the month club um, over on my Patreon, just hit that chat book plus tier. And you could get my new chat book tonight. Poems written in one night, part two. It's like one night, part two, but it's called two night because I'm too clever with my shit. There's like 19 poems in here, I think, um, that I wrote with the Anarchy crew and just one little sitting there. Good shit. And maybe I'll read something out of that today, too, as I read to you other things that I love on the poetry front. Should I do some... Let, let's, let's wet Nancy's noodle and do the poems first. <sighs> okay, I'm back. You're like, what happened? Where did you go? I went to the bathroom. Duh. All right, so, so this first poem I'm going to read is kind of like my favorite Bukowski poem, sort of. It's not one that's always my favorite, but, like, I, I go through different phases where, like, this is my favorite Bukowski poem, this is my favorite Bukowski poem, this is my favorite Bukowski poem. But this one, like, if I ever had to do, like, a top five every time I decided what was my favorite Bukowski poem, this one would probably always be in the top five. And with good reason. It's in almost every collection of Bukowski stuff. Um, as far as, like... I mean, obviously not the, not all the Black Sparrow books, but um, in this one, it's in Burning and Water, Drowning in Flame. I think it's also in Rooming House Madrigals. I might be wrong about that, actually. But it's, it's in a ton of stuff. Um, and it's also in, uh, what was that first book? It Catches My Heart in Its Hands. Anyway, it's The Tragedy of the Leaves. I awakened to dryness and the ferns were dead. The potted plants yellow as corn. My woman was gone. And the empty bottles like bled corpses surrounded me with their uselessness. The sun was still good though. And my landlady's note cracked in fine. An undemanding yellowness. What was needed now was a good comedian. Ancient style, a jester, with jokes upon absurd pain. Pain is absurd because it exists, nothing more. 
I shaved carefully with an old razor. The man who had once been young and said to have genius, but that's the tragedy of the leaves, the dead ferns, the dead plants, and I walked into a dark hall where the landlady stood, execrating and final, sending me to hell, waving her fat, sweaty arms and screaming, screaming for rent, because the world had failed us both. So that's just an awesome Bukowski poem. And probably one of his most famous. And if you've seen any of my Bukowski chapbook videos, that comes up all the time. Now I'm going to read you a poem by Al Purdy out of Poems for All the Annettes. The funny thing is, this is one of the few poetry books that I haven't gone through with post-its. I usually put post-its on everything. And this one I never did that to. And what sucks about that is that there was a poem I wanted to read. And in the 10 or 15 minutes before this happened, um, I couldn't find it. So I'm going to read to you probably my second favorite poem in this collection, which is also a quite famous poem from him. Wow, this is kind of embarrassing. This says here, the poem is called At the Quinty Hotel for Alan Pearson. For some reason, I always thought it was the Coyote Hotel. I just thought that, and I guess I never looked at it to make sure. That's fucking stupid. So, at the Quinty Hotel? Quint? No, I think it's Quinty Hotel. I am drinking. I am drinking beer with yellow flowers in underground sunlight. And you can see that I am a sensitive man. And notice that the bartender is a sensitive man, too. So I tell him about this beer. I tell him the beer he draws is half fart and half horse piss. And all wonderful yellow flowers. But the bartender is not quite so sensitive as I supposed he was. The way he looks at me now and does not appreciate my exquisite analogy... Over in one corner, two guys are quietly making love, in the brief prelude to affinity. Opposite them, a peculiar fight enables the drinkers to lay aside their comic books and watch with interest, as I watch with interest. A wiry little man slugs another guy, then tracks him bleeding into the toilet, and slugs him to the floor again, with ugly red flowers on the tile. Three minutes later, he roosters over to the table where his drunk friend sits with another friend and slugs both of them ass over electric kettle. So I have to walk around on my way for a piss. Now I'm a sensitive man, so I say to him mildly as hell, you shouldn't have knocked over that good beer with them beautiful flowers on it. He says to me, come on, so I come on, like a rabbit with weak kidneys, I guess, like a yellow streak charging on flower power, I suppose, and knock the shit out of him and sit on him, he's just a little guy, and say reprovingly, violence will get you nowhere this time, chum, now you take me, I am a sensitive man. And would you believe I write poems? But I could see the doubt in the, his upside-down face. In fact, all the faces. What kind of poems? Flower poems. So tell us a poem. I got off the little guy, but reluctantly, for he was comfortable, and told them this poem. They crowded around me with tears in their eyes, and wrung my hands feelingly for my pockets, for it was a heartwarming moment for literature, and moved by the demonstrable effect of great art, and the brotherhood of people I remarked. A poem ought to be worth some beer. It was a mistake of terminology, for silence came, and it was brought home to me in a tavern. The poems will not really buy beer or flowers, or a goddamn thing. 
and I was sad, for I am a sensitive man. And that was written in 1964, according to that. So, Al Purdy, poems for all the Annettes. So anyway, so that poem, it's pretty good. It's pretty long. I don't like the way it's set up on the page. I like the poem. I like what the poem says. But I don't like the look of the poem. All right, what's next? What do we have here? So this is um, uh, Holly Day out of her book, Book of Beasts. This poem is called Bloodlines. I like this one a lot. The maple sends its helicopter seeds across the yard. In desperation dreams of propagation, I rake most of them up. Rip out the long roots of the ones that slip past me. Take the root and try to grow. I sometimes wonder if my tree hates me, if it feels angry when it sees me. With my gardening shears cl clipping its offspring close to the ground, or if it's resigned itself to the fact that it will never be surrounded by a forest of its own family. I think of these violent acts of mine during heavy storms when the limbs of the tree rips around my roof. If it's using the wind and the lightning as, it, as an excuse to drop branches and clumps of leaves on my lawn. If it's aiming for me and my children and an act of retaliation so sly, it won't ever be blamed. Dude, Holly Day is fucking awesome. She should be seriously, like, household fucking name. And, um, she is, she's one of those poets that doesn't get back to me very quickly. And it drives me crazy. But I, I give her a little more room than I would give others because her work is so fucking good. And that's not even my favorite stuff of hers. That's just like one of my favorite poems of hers. My, um, I think I've said this before, but my favorite stuff of hers that I've ever read is stuff that I don't think has been published anywhere. And I'm trying to get her to let me put a book of her stuff out. Dude, that is so weird. There's been a guy pacing back and forth on the roof of this building across the street all day. I'm wondering if he's going to jump. I don't think it's high enough to kill him. Maybe maim him. Okay, this um, is one of my favorite poems by Neely Tchaikovsky. This is out of his book, Leaning Against Time. This is called Animal. First, I talk to the receptionist, then to a social worker. Next, I'll confer with a medical student and a supervisor. After four intake sessions, I will be assigned a therapist. I am an animal with no rainforest and no wild river. I have no hunting grounds or mountain range. I am trapped, cornered, and anticipating the worst. I called the state employment agency, but they are only hiring armadillos and leopards this week. Next week, they are interviewing geese with more than four years experience. I am lost, and I have no way of telling this to my dog. Comet jumps into my lap. He probably thinks I am a very successful writer, or maybe he doesn't even know that I write. I am not the one who buys his dog food, but I am the one who opens the can. Comet may not be able to understand the difference. The social worker at the psychiatric clinic asked, What's the matter? I told her how confused I felt. There are strange animals everywhere. The other animals seem well fitted to survival. I am surviving all right, but not on my own terms. I used to be able to stalk my prey and pounce. Now I don't even join the hunt. I want to be put on the endangered species list. I need to be protected. I want a reservation. I will move through water like a dolphin. I will think ocean thoughts like the blue whale. I will soar like a condor over California hills and dart in dust of Ohio brush land like a red fox. I am only a track in the sand. I am merely a clump of fur on a rose bush. 
I am practically invisible. Really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. And this one is kind of new to me. Okay, so this is um, John Berryman's um, 77 Dream Songs. And this is uh, Dream Song 14. Life, friends, is boring. We must not say so. After all, the sky flashes. The great sea yearns. We ourselves flash and yearn. And moreover, my mother told me as a boy, repeatingly, ever to confess you're bored means you have no inner resources. I conclude now I have no inner resources because I am heavy bored. People bore me. Literature bores me, especially great literature. Henry bores me with his plights and gripes as bad as Achilles. Who loves people and valiant art, which bores me? And the tranquil hills and gin look like a drag, and somehow a dog has taken itself and its tail considerably away into mountains or sea or sky, leaving behind me. Wag. I hate how that ends, but fuck, I love the rest of that. So good. Really, really like that. Heavy board. God damn, dude. When I fucking heard that, because the first time I heard this, I didn't read it. I heard him reading it um, from a YouTube clip. I think it was on Poetry Says. I think Alice played it, and then I went and watched a bunch of the stuff of him on YouTube. But he's so fucking angsty and angry, and he just, when he says, I'm heavy bored. It's just like ripping you through your fucking chest, dude. And fuck, man. I feel it. I'm there. I'm there with you. I'm not jumping off the bridge, but I'm there with you. Okay. Now we're going to... Um, and I, I feel bad because I feel like a lot of people, especially in the Anarchy crew, have heard me read all of these poems before. But tough shit. Oh, my God. Okay. So now I'm going to read... Okay. This is... Uh, my, probably my favorite poetry collection. Um, it is Skull Juices by Douglas Blazik. And I couldn't decide if I was going to read Questions on the Night Shift, Answers in the Soft Air, or To My Love Who is Cleaning the Basement. I love both of these poems. So I'm going uh, to do Questions on the Night Shift right now. Trapped into combat, like a cork in a tank muzzle, I drag my James Cagney Tommy gunned body out to the car. On the way to work, I pass a thousand convertibles, while a hunched seed of bitterness grows along the stubble of my wings. The oceans rise on beach-coiled lovers, the hills snare moons, Great books are being written in fleshy tunnels. But as for me, my body is claimed for another eight hours. The why sandblasting my skull and the answers straining in the universe to tell me. Violet clouds of frozen waves of ash. The cracked and patched earthworm sidewalk. Mud like excrement sloshed around by a giant palette knife. Tires eternally spinning beads on a crib. Telephone wires strangling the air. My feet lift out of the Chevy as I groan a little, dying of old age in my twenties, claimed by the night shift. And when the back finally breaks, I'll know it wasn't from straw, but from answers. So, really fucking good shit. Oh, so good. Fucking love it, love it, love it. Now I'm going to read... This is Bucks's book, Dirge for an Imaginary World by Matthew Buckley Smith. I had a bunch of poems that I wanted him to read when he was on the show. And we were talking so much, and I'm so not good at my job 
that I forgot to fucking ask him to read his poems out of his poetry book on my poetry podcast. So I'm going to read this one for you. It's called An Old Song. Restless nights after class, we'd sit down with a beer to watch bicycles float by the bars and the street surface flicker like glass at a place we called ours for a week or a year. With a little girl's smile, you drop ash on my arm and blow smoke at the papers I rolled. Getting lit, we passed off as a style and believed or were told we meant nobody harm. Till one night at our table, you borrowed my knife to cut four letters into the wood. And I tried, but I just wasn't able to pretend you'd be good for the rest of your life. Though we called the place ours for a year or a day, when the lights came on, we had to pay. All the shop windows glittered like stars. There was nothing to say, and there's nothing to say. Fucking love that. I love the fucking image that that fucking gives me, dude. Good stuff, good stuff. Actually, I'm gonna do this real quick while I'm here. Can I do that while I'm here? Um, so this is a poem by Bunny Wild out of her book Monsters in the Mouth, which, um, yeah, I don't have a copy of it. It's just an ebook here. Um, this is called Would You. Would you let me rip you apart if you could? Would you let me rend your limbs away and your tether to your medius parts if there were no pain? for my pleasure, to see you that way, to take your body, to make you a pile of yourself, see what your insides look like. If I could do it with no shame, would you do it for me? He asked me just now on the couch. There were worse things he said, but I'm trying to ignore him now. I love how this poem, like you think she is saying this to somebody else. And I think this is a thing with gender that we have um, in society where if a woman were to be saying this to a man, it's like, it's like kind of hot, you know, you're like, Ooh, this is kind of erotic and naughty and blah, 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 blah. But then when you hear it, as a man saying this to a woman, it becomes terrifying. It becomes fucking horrific. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? That's, that's the, the thing that I get from this. So as soon as it says, um, he asked me just now on the couch and then you're like, Jesus fucking Christ. And then the next bit is there were worse things he said but I'm trying to ignore him. It's like, what the fuck? Um, she's great. Bunny's fucking amazing. Bunny is another one of those poets that probably, I think with Bunny, Bunny writes more than any other poet I know, but it just goes back to that whole thing where like, I wish Bunny can, could feel or could see how everyone who loves her shit could see her stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that doubt shit again, man. I'm going to read a poem out of my new chapbook tonight. Just got to find out which one to do. I read Picasso Face on my channel, on, my, on the YouTubes. Okay, we'll do this one, I guess. This is called People at the Party. The people at the party pretend to be interested, pretend to be interesting, pretend a lot of things, pretend they like the same things as the other people pretending, a lot of head nodding, a lot of uh-huh and yes and of course, I want to call them all out on their shit, I spend most of the night battling myself trying to keep quiet, then after that one drink that pushes me over the edge. I tell everyone how I feel, but they think I'm charming, but I'm not. I'm calling it like I see it. 
They like it. What the fuck? Can't I piss these people off? I don't like them. I don't want them around. I want to leave, but somehow forgot where I live and how to get there. Ugh. I will probably end up fucking one of these people and figure it all out in the morning. Ruin the day. I got talked into going to a fucking party with a bunch of pretend people pretending to be people. So yeah, so that's People at the Party out of Tonight by me, Matt Wall. And that was a bunch of poetry that I like. I, I'm going to try to come up with, you know, one or two poems to do on these episodes as we go, especially if I find stuff that um, is relevant to what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. That's it. everybody it's time for the butt plugs do, 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 whatever song plays when butt plugs are happening um, so let's look at this real quick I do have some some news for you guys that we will be getting into in a bit again go over to ihatematwall.com and sign up for my mailing list you get a free book that will not be in existence after December 31st, okay? Um, there'll be something new up there. And when I put the new one up there, you'll get that one as well. So don't you fret. And another thing you will get when you're on my mailing list is you will get the um, little things like my um, Black Friday slash Cyber Monday slash shopping extravaganza sale discount code so make sure you're around to pick that up um and i'm gonna be saying it in here anyway so it doesn't really fucking matter does it um yeah but if you also want to um sign up for any mem mentorship or anything like that like if you want to like was that on here or was that in a different video where I was talking about, I've even reached out for mentorship to find out what people would think I should do next kind of thing. But if you need to come up with a marketing plan, a marketing strategy, um, a social media strategy for what you're doing, or if you just want me to go over your manuscript, or if you want to kind of plot out your book with me and have me kind of help you like doing more of like a uh, content editing or something like that. Hit me up. Just send me an email to I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com and let me know what you're looking for. And if I can help you, I will tell you. And I will be honest with you. If I can't help you, I will tell you to look elsewhere. But um, you could check that out or just go to I hate Matt Wall.com slash mentorship and look at that and see how that goes. Um, Blood Rag Issue 5 is out now. But unless I get paper in the next 24 hours, I'm going to have to take it down um, because I'm out of paper. So I need to. And you guys are like, dude, how is paper so hard to find? There is a specific newsprint that I like to use because I'm super fucking OCD. That's it. That's all there is, guys. Or else I would just use shitty ass fucking 20 pound fucking printer paper. But if you go over to my Etsy shop, there is a, a ton of stuff on there. Um, on, I guess I'll put it up Monday. I said Tuesday, but fuck it, I'll do it Monday. My new chapbook that I read from earlier tonight will be up there. I think I'll do a whole other thing about pricing. But if you get in while there are a lot of copies of something, you will pay less then you will later down the road when there are fewer copies left, if that makes any sense to you. But um, all of the products that I have up there, um, with the exception of the z zines and mini zines, those aren't. But everything else, like the chapbooks and the broadsides and bookmarks when I have them up and art pieces when I have them up, are all signed and numbered, so that's cool. Um, my books are up on Amazon. If you just type Matt Wall Books, um, 
a bunch of other things will come up first, but I will be there. And the only reason why I'm saying it like that is because apparently all my fucking Amazon links are broken. So I have to fucking go through and try to fix that now. Um, you could also pick up the Poetic Anarchy anthologies on there, volumes one and two. Volume three is coming out very soon. Um, Horrywood, if you're a Kindle Vela fan, um, I have a serial up on there right now. Again, my music is on all your streaming platforms, whether it's Creeperson or just Matt Wall. So on um, YouTube Music, um, Amazon Music or Prime Music or whatever, Spotify, Pandora, um, Julebob and Balibib and whatever the fuck else. Um, let me see. Oh, and if you have anything you want to say about any of the stupid shit I've said, you can send it to IHateMattWall at gmail.com. If you want to be a guest on the show, pitch me your fucking idea. I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. And if you just send me an email saying, yeah, I want to be on the show, that doesn't fucking help me. Okay? Like, you need to have a fucking idea. Because, like, fuck, anybody could do anything. Like, you just want to come on the show and, like, eat a fucking cheeseburger and let us ASMR you to death, dude? That's not what I'm talking about. Um, and, again, if you want me to teach a workshop, any of the Poetic Anarchy things, um, I'm more than happy to fucking come and do that. It any live place, virtual place, whatever. So just let me know. And I guess that's it. I felt like there was more shit I was supposed to do, but now I can't remember what those things are. Oh wait, I do. I gotta give you the actual fucking promo code for the um, pricing for this week. So, this is the coupon code you use at checkout on my Etsy shop. It is BLKFRI20, in all caps, BLKFRI20. If you use that, you will get 20% off of almost everything in the shop. Like, as far as chapbooks go. There is one chapbook that you're not going to get 20% off on. Which one is that? Well, a new thing I'm going to be doing is every month, um, sometimes it'll be a chapbook, sometimes it'll be a broadside, sometimes it'll be, I don't know, a postcard, maybe, a piece of art, whatever. Um, a mini zine, whatever. There's going to be one item that is priced so ridiculously low that you can't say no to it. And this week, for the rest of this week or whatever, that item is, I wish I had it right here, but I don't. But it is my chapbook called Mart. And it says Matt Wall Mart. So it looks like it says Walmart. And it's kind of funny, it's supposed to be funny like that. But anyway, um, originally it was supposed to be like how I was selling it was um, poetry about consumerism in America, which it pretty much isn't, but it kind of is because it's talking about the madness of people at stores. But, like, if you really get down to the brass tacks of it, what the poems in that fucking book are are the anxiety of me either fearing getting into a line and waiting in line, waiting in line, or trying to get out of the line as quickly as possible so I don't lose my fucking mind. So, since the holidays are here, and we're going to be all standing in lines, I thought this would be a fun little book for you guys to read. And you're like, so what's the big deal? So, Mart is going to be $5 for the rest of November. Okay? So, the discount code works on all the other chapbooks. So, you'll get 20% off of all the other chapbooks. And again, the chapbooks range in prices from anywhere from $9 to $25. Okay, so using that discount code on certain books can really fucking help you out a lot there. So anyway, Mart, $5, tonight, out Monday. And again, BLKFRI20, and you could use that code until the end of the month. All right, so um, let me know how you guys are all doing. Keep buying my books, type hard, everybody, and I will talk to you later.
I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.